Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Berkeley Math Tournament, Calculus Test 2022, problem number 5. We wish to compute the following series from k equals 0 to infinity of square root of k squared plus 3 times k plus 2 minus square root of k squared plus k minus 1. My hints for this problem. Uh, first, consider first finite sum from Mm, k equals 0 to capital K of our expression and probably some type of telescoping will be going on. So give this problem a try and I will see you in just a minute. Okay, very well. So my solution. You know what? Maybe I will first deal with uh, this square roots because notice that this is a quadratic function under our root and it can be factorized as k plus 1, k plus 2. And in a very similar way, k squared plus k can be factorized as k times k plus 1. And we see that this differs from this by 1 and this differs from this also by 1. So telescoping will be going on. Okay, and now let's consider my sum from k equals 0 to so capital K of k plus 1, k plus 2, minus k times k plus 1, minus 1. Very well. And now I will split it into three different sums. First sum goes from 0 to capital K. Second one goes from 0 to capital K, K times K plus 1, and the last sum also goes from 0 to capital K, but it's from only we are in we are summing a bunch of ones. And now since this and this roots are very similar, I will do what exactly? I will shift my uh, index by 1. So instead of k, I will put k minus 1. So k minus 1 goes from 0, k minus 1 goes to k, and here I will have k minus 1, k minus 1. Very well. The second sum can stay as it is. And finally, the last sum, we are summing from k equals 0 to capital K, so we have just capital K plus 1 once, obviously. And let's take a look. First sum goes from 1 to capital K plus 1 of k times k plus 1 minus sum going from 1, no, from 0, sorry, from 0 to capital K of k times k plus 1 minus k minus 1. And if you take a close look, these two sums are very similar. A bunch of terms will be gone in a moment, apart from two terms. Namely, in our first sum we are summing to k plus 1, so k plus 1 will stay, capital K plus 1. Everything from the first sum will be gone, apart from this term, and in the second sum, everything will be gone, but for the zeroth term. And we have capital K plus 1, capital K plus 2, minus K minus 1. Okay, very well. Or maybe you know what, I will write it in parentheses. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want now to find the limit as capital K goes to infinity of this expression. Because remember that my infinite sum is just a limit of partial sums. So let's now find limit as capital K goes to infinity of capital K plus 1 capital K plus 2, 
minus k plus 1. Uh, we have infinity minus infinity, which is a problem. <laughs> Classical trick when we have a difference of square root and something, we can uh, we can we can do the following. We can write it as our root and now I will artificially multiply by k plus 1 k plus 2 plus k plus 1 and in the denominator the same. So my fraction stays the same. Very well, very well, and now look what happens. If I do that, uh, I have limit as capital K goes to plus infinity of what exactly? Well, in the numerator, I now have uh, something A minus B, A plus B. So it's just K plus 1, K plus 2, minus K plus 1 squared, and in the denominator, uh, in the denominator, I can factor out k plus one. And after factoring out k plus one, I will be left with k plus two over k plus one plus one. Okay, very well. I'm running out of space, and so I will move it a little bit higher. And now let's take a look. Here I have k plus 1, here I have k plus 1 squared, and here I have k plus 1, so it's gone. And I am left with, uh, well, k plus 2 minus k plus 1, so it's just 1 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I can, under my square root, I can divide everything by capital K. So I have 1 plus 2 over capital K, 1 over 1 over capital K, plus 1. And now let's take a look. Uh, well, this entire square root right here, it goes to 1, because we have square root of 1 over 1, so the entire thing is just 1 half. So we know now that our infinite sum equals 1 half. And let's go back to our statement. Yes, we exactly wanted to compute it. So this result is just one half. And that is our answer. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.